Good evening, church. Thank you for joining us. As you can see, we have uh, Connor is with us. Nice yeah. to be here. He is interning with us for the summer here, and so um, I just roped him into recording with me. So we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, get to 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm reading out the New American Standard. I'm uh, reading on the NIV. All right. So let's get us started here. I'll start in verse... 1 of 2 Kings chapter 4 says this, Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor has come to take, uh, to take my two children to be his slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow a vessel uh, at large for yourself from all of your neighbors. Even empty vessels, don't get just a few. And you shall go in, shut the door behind you and your sons, and pour out in, uh, into all these vessels, and you shall set aside what is full. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and they were bringing the vessels to her, and she poured. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not one vessel more, and the oil stopped. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons can live on the rest. All right, let's just start with the, what, what, what we see happening here. What's, what's kind of the first observation you have just in this first um, little passage here that we read about? Um, what, what do you see happening here? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's really great to see in a Bible story uh, people actually um, listening uh, and doing, <laughs> what they're, doing what they're asked to the first time. Um, and I think it also just shows the, the great loyalty that God has. I mean, he, he told... Um, he had Elijah tell this this woman to to collect empty jars and to to fill them, and he uh, he fulfilled on that, and and the she paid her debts. We have a a miracle that happens. I think there's a couple things you touched on. That uh, one is she was told to go out and get vessels. And he says, don't just get a few; get as many as you can get. Now, the, this this kind of gives us the point. Listen, if um, if, if God is going to provide a miracle or do something great and wants to do something great, uh, part of our responsibility then is, is is to to go out in faith. You know, I, yeah. my my assumption is is that the amount of vessels that she would have gathered, she would have been able to fill. Yeah. So she would have gathered, you know, fifteen from her friends. She would have filled fifteen. If she mm -hmm. would have gathered a hundred, she would have filled a hundred. And, and 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 I would even go to say if she would have gathered every vessel in the entire community or or city, they all would have been filled. Yeah. And so the miracle was kind of dependent on her amount of faith of yeah. what she, her and her sons brought in, which is, is kind of a beautiful thing too. So mm -hmm. um, any other observations you kind of see in that passage there? Yeah. I, I also think it's kind of um, like it, that it, that really is like a, a work of faith to, to go out and do that because that's kind of embarrassing to like <laughs> walk up to every neighbor yeah. and ask for a, uh, as for all of their empty jars. Right. Um, I mean, I, I wonder how that conversation went. It says in verse 3, go borrow vessels at large uh, for yourself from all your neighbors. Can you imagine? Uh, here's this lady, and they're like, yeah. wait, aren't they repossessing, like, all your stuff? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, can I have your empty vessels? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and don't just ask for a few. Ask for all of them. <laughs> I have everything that you have here. <laughs> Why would I give this? So I think there's probably some faith part on the neighbors, too. Yeah. And how embarrassing it, it could have been to say, yeah, yeah I need that. I know they're taking everything that I have, but can I have what yeah. your leftovers too? I think, yeah, it's also, it's like, that's a really hard thing to do sometimes to ask for help like that. And, oh, uh, yeah. and, and I think that's really cool that, that she was able to do that. And yeah, I guess in the last thing I would notice here is that the neighbors would have had to witness the miracle too. Yeah. Right. So you, she goes around and she goes and asks everybody, Hey, can I have this? They may or say, well, I have something substantial too. And she says, no, I'm looking for your empty vessel. And then all of a sudden they're all full. And maybe she sells them back to the people that got them, right? right. Now, here's your here's your jar back, completely full of oil. And, you right. know, I mean, you, you can just see the miracle was, didn't just affect her, but affected mm -hmm. her children. But I would venture to guess it affected the entire community as well. Yeah. And people would be talking about this miracle for, 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 for years, right, and generations. Yeah. And here right. we're reading about it, right? Right. Thousands of years later. And I think that's, I think that's a really good example of how God can use us to glorify him. Yeah, because um, that's like what a what a God moment to like pull this woman out of debt and then also like yeah. have such an impact on the community. I think that's really cool. Well, maybe that's the challenge that we have for us today too. 
Yeah. You know, what is God calling us to do? You know, it seems silly. And I guess we even read in the next chapter about Naaman, you know, something mm -hmm. silly. You know, it doesn't seem elaborate or, you know, big. And sometimes we think we, we need this big, huge thing for God to do his miracle. And he's saying, listen, I just want you to be obedient. Yeah. And are you willing to be obedient in something that doesn't make sense to you mm -hmm. so I can provide this miracle? Very good. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Um, you want to read the next? Yeah, uh, why don't you read the next uh, ver uh, verse 8 yeah. through? Right. Uh, one day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put, it in, put in it a bed and a table, a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. Hmm. One day, when Elisha came, he went up to his room and laid down there. He said to his servant Jehazi, call the Shunammite. So he called to her, and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, have you, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. Jehazi said, She has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So he called to her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, You will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. Let, all right, let, let's let's take a break this down a little bit. I, uh, I think part of the first observation I see here um, is that there was this you know prominent woman. You said well-to-do woman. I think is what your translation mm -hmm. said uh, that Elisha would sweet, stop by on his way through all the time, and she took and said, well, "Let's make let's make a room for him, so he has an actual nice place to stay." Um, and so she did this part of just, I think, being hospitable. That was normal probably for her. It was probably uh, easy for her. Uh, the part that sometimes we overlook this is as her husband was old and she was without child. And what it would mean to not have a child at an older age. Yeah. And, you know, children were everything to, you know, it was part of, it's a lot different than, I think, today's culture and society. But uh, to have a child, like those are those are your blessings. Like, yeah. uh, blessed is the one whose quiver is full. Like, so if you have yeah. lots of children, like that was something that people would look and say, uh, you're very successful. It, but they also said that she was a prominent woman. So you, you you see that she was successful by other means, but not through bearing children. Right. And so you know, what do you think this actually meant to her? You know, I guess when you hear that, uh, I mean, what kind of emotions could be going through her? I mean, she she mentions a little bit, but. Uh, what, what could you see that uh, I guess you'd be excited about? Well, I mean, she she sounds like scared almost to like be given hope. Um, <laughs> right. You know, uh, and, and I kind of, I mean, I understand that. Like if you've lived your life, they probably have tried for children. Um, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very unlikely that they, that they, that they didn't. And so um, to be so many years barren and then to be told, Hey, you're going to have a kid in a year. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of a scary, scary thing to have hope for, for once. Cause right. after you've given up so much, it's, it's, um, it's almost worse to like get, get that back and then to lose it again. So right. she right. was, she was probably worried about that. Um, but yeah, to, to have, to be told that you're going to have a blessing and then, also have that fear of it not coming true. I wonder what her husband thought. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, we bring this man, he comes through all the time and says, hey, but next year you're going to have a child. What, what, what do you mean? You know, we've been trying this for years, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been trying to figure out all these things and and uh, it's just not going to happen. And, and when you're barren at a certain age, you just figure that's, there's nothing else going to happen. And then you have this miracle that just comes to pass. And, and I think... I was kind of reading both of these passages. There's obedience that comes on the first side before the miracle happens. Yeah. And, and it's, it's kind of a great reminder probably for us and a challenge for us that there's obedience that we have to, this part that we have to do first yeah. before God can provide the miracle. Sometimes we're like, hey, God, can you hurry up and just do the miracle? And then I'll follow you. You know, if you give me all this, then I'll, and, and it's almost like we're bartering with God. Right. And he's saying, and we're just seeing two examples here where he's saying, listen, what you need to do is you need to step out in faith. Yeah. You need to do what you're supposed to be doing, and then the miracle will come after that. Um, let's read a little bit more. We got a few, a few more minutes here. Let's read a little bit more. Um, it says, verse 18, uh, when the child was grown. Okay, so I guess we're going to guess a, a, a period of time, time right? Yep. 
The day came when he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, My head, my head. And he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her lap until noon and then died. Ugh. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and return. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It's neither the new moon or the Sabbath. She said, It will be well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward and do not slow down the pace for me unless I tell you. So she went and came to the man of God at, uh, uh, to Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, there is the Shumanite. Please run uh, now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God uh, to the hill, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came near to push her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is troubled within her. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. This is, this is interesting. Uh, then she said, Did I not... Did I ask for a son for my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Kind of what you were talking about earlier. And he said to Gehazi, Gehazi, lift, gird up your loins, take my staff in your hand and go your way. If you meet any man, do not salute him. And if anyone salutes you, do not answer him and lay my staff on the lad's face. The mother of the lad said, as the Lord lives and as you live, as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. Then Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff on the lad's face, but there was no sound. Or response. So he returned to meet him and told him the lad has not awakened. Okay, I know. Okay, we're we're at time here, but and I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage you guys to finish reading this story because it gets better. It, it gets does. better. He he doesn't die. He doesn't stay dead. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, but the point is, what we see here again is that she had to take the first steps to yeah. go. She, she left everything to go and pursue uh, Elisha, the man of God. And I think if, if I have one kind of word today for us is that we are, are we willing to take those first steps in faith Yeah. Um, and watch God do the miracle. All right. Well, thank you. Any last comments, Connor? Uh, no, just that to trust God's loyalty and, and move in that first step of faith. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let me pray with you. Thank you for spending time with us, Father. I thank you for each and everyone here, God. I pray you watch over and keep them safe, Father. Lord, I pray that you give us the faith. Lord, show us how to what we need to step out, what we need to walk forward. Lord, keep us from just becoming complacent and staying still, Lord, and, and maybe even losing faith and hope. I pray you re restore our hope, Father, that increases our faith. I pray you watch over us this week. Keep us safe, Lord. Give us an opportunity to share your love with someone. We ask this all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 God bless. Have a great week. We hope to see you on Sunday. It is our family service, and we are doing a motorcycle ride right afterward. God bless. I'll talk to you later.